Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada, where it is our mission to grow together in love, faith, justice, and joy. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Xiomara Rodriguez, and my pronouns are she, her, ella. And I am so honored to serve as your worship associate today. And we are meeting, we should remember and be meeting on the ancestral lands of the Paiute, Shoshone, and Washoe tribes, and must be mindful of our profound debt to our indigenous brothers and sisters. I would like to agree with J.L. Kraft, the head of the Kraft Cheese Corporation. I know this is not good, but work with me a little bit here. He said, the only investment I've ever made which has paid consistently increasing dividends is the money I give to the Lord. I'll change that a little bit. I would change it to, I would uh, say, the only investment I ever made that has paid consistently increasing dividend is the money I give to my church. Just a little tweak, you know. <laughs> Mr. Kraft and I have not a lot of things in common. <laughs> so, as we're sitting here in our sanctuary or on Zoom, always remember that our life is to be like a river, not like a reservoir. With those thoughts in mind, I would like to welcome you all here. No matter where you are today, if inside the sanctuary or on the Zoom air, uh, airwave, Zoom, wherever, hi Zoom, you are very welcome. Welcome here regardless of racial identity, age, economic circumstances, immigration status, sexual orientation, or gender ID. We welcome you here and we are so glad you're here. If this is your first time here or your hundredth and fifteenth time, we are so glad that you're here. We ask that you all respect the wishes of folks who choose to continue social distance. To those of you on Zoom, remember that you will be muted throughout the whole service, but you can make your comments on the chat box. And also stay uh, after service for coffee time. So no matter where you are today, sit back, you are welcome. And now, before we start our greeting one another, I want to remind all of you, back there, in the back, the pieces of paper, so you could write your joys and sorrows and bring them forward so we could have them doing joys and sorrow time. Now please, take a few minutes to greet one another in whichever way is better for you. You could hug, handshake, wave, or whatever, and I will ring the bow. Good morning. It is so good to see you all on this shiny, bright morning. I'm so glad we're here together. 
In this time of transition, you may have met our transition team and they're offering us special opportunities to have get togethers. And the next one is gonna be next Sunday, the 25th. And uh, we have some good topics lined up. And those are more of a focused opportunity to talk about certain uh, elements of our life here together. So we want everybody's input on that as we form a profile of this place and help focus what it is that you're gonna be wanting in your new ministry. And so I want us to take this opportunity today to do something that's a little less focused and a lot more fun. And we're gonna do an activity instead of a sermon today. So I'm looking forward to that. And it's in, on behalf of our all of us to think about uh, all the ways we're connected to one another, all the ways we love each other, all the things that give us the gifts of community here at UUFNN. And our reading this morning is from my friend Sherry Woodbury. Again, we reground ourselves here in our highest values. Love is the center and foundation of this faith. Love is the power that holds us together as a community. As we enter into worship, then, let us open our hearts to the healing power of liberating love. Because love is not only something we receive, but something we practice in community. Let fall away all that might distract us from the wholehearted practice of love. Let us be accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. As we continue to listen and learn, to act and to grow, may each unfold in wholeness, both deeply loving and truly loved. Please rise, embody your spirit, and join us in singing. Love will guide us. Of our a member of our stewardship team coming up to give us a little stewardship update. Is that right? Linda's coming. Yay. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, happy Sunday. So good morning. My name is Linda Bowman. Uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm the co-president elect and co-chair of the stewardship committee. I want to first thank all of you that attended last Sunday. It was a great party. Um, it was our stewardship kickoff. And thank you especially to those that turned in your pledges. It was just an amazing time. Events like that bring us together and demonstrate the commitment of our members. And thank you to the volunteers, whether you brought food, set up tables, 
help to clean up, or sat at a table with a new visitor that day. No matter how much or little you volunteered on Sunday, you helped make it an amazing day. Those of you who attend by Zoom, you are not forgotten. I have attended many services on Zoom, and I enjoy chatting with you during coffee hour and possibly at one of our board listening circles. You're a huge part of this congregation, and none of the Zoom services or gathering could happen without our amazing tech team. So please thank them when you have a chance. Pledging and giving financially to our congregation allows us to continue with operating expenses, our social justice work, share the plate nonprofits, along with other programs, including our amazing choir and other events. As of yesterday, we've received $142,610 with 55 pledges received. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. You are appreciated more than you know. And if you haven't uh, pledged or have any questions, please see Nancy Oakley. She's out in the gathering room. Or you can also send an email to stewardship at uufnn.org. I'd like to leave you this morning with a quote by Buddha. Give, even if you only have a little. Thank you again. And now Brad Buxton is going to come up. With love and imagination, <clears throat> I believe we will get there. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't go as you imagine. Uh, Patty, my wife, was supposed to be up here uh, to give her testimony, but she had an accident. And uh, she'll be okay eventually, but she's on the mend. So I will be reading her testimony. And it goes like this. <clears throat> I was having breakfast with my fifth grader son, Patrick, on a rare sunny Monday morning in Eugene, Oregon, when he said, I'm worried about Annie Trish and Annie Lisa. Lisa. I was confused and said, do you know something I don't? No, he said, I'm worried that they won't go to heaven because if God had meant for same-sex couples to marry, he would have created Adam and Steve, not Adam and Eve. What the heck? I thought, but with much more coarse language. Uh, Patrick had spent the weekend in Portland and had attended an evangelical mega church. He said he had really enjoyed the experience and was interested in going to church regularly. Growing up, my family was Catholic. My older brother was an altar boy and had been abused by the parish priest. Plus, I had had my own traumatic events with the church. So I had long since eschewed organized religion. But the church was also a great sense of community and some, on some level, I did miss that in my life. As a young adult, I did try other religious practices, paganism, Eastern religions, but nothing felt like home. <clears throat> but as a mom, I didn't want to want my revulsion of organized religion to rob my son of the rituals of a faith community. Well, we were certainly not going to go to an evangelical church. We needed a community that shared our progressive values of love and inclusion. So what is a mom to do? I searched on the internet for wisdom, of course, I discovered the UU Church in Eugene, and with trepidation, we visited. We were immediately greeted warmly and were made to feel comfortable. This felt nice, but my walls were still firmly in place. We sat together, but were we sat together, but were separated when the chilts were sung off to our hearts go with you. I was alone, but didn't feel scared. Everyone seemed so happy to be there. When we held hands and sang, roots hold me close, wings set me free, unexpectedly my eyes welled up and I knew that this is what I had been missing in my life. At the end of the service, Reverend Caroline came to me and we talked for quite a bit. And then she hugged me so warmly and generally that I melted. Patrick had had a great time in religious education, and we decided to return the next Sunday, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that. Brad worked on Sundays, so he could not join us, but Patrick and I continued to attend, eventually became members. 
Fast forward, Patrick is an adult and moved to Portland. Brad and I moved around a bit for my career, and then we landed in Reno. We were listening to KUNR on the radio when there was an announcement about the art show at UUFNN. We were curious because it was the intersection of Brad's interest in art and my history with UU. So we went to show, went to the show and loved it. We decided to attend a Sunday service. I was on crutches, having broken my ankle earlier. I was always doing something like that. <laughs> Uh, as I had experience at UUCE, we were greeted warmly. We entered the sanctuary, and Jenny motioned for us to sit next to her. Laura and Ellery were seated in front of us and turned around to welcome us. This felt right. On our second visit, Reverend Karen came to us and asked if we liked wine. Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> of course we did. We met at Whispering Vine that week, and she asked us about our hopes and dreams and told us about UUFNN. We were hooked. We went through a chosen faith, as it was called back then, and became members. We joined the Junto group, which was called Younger Adults back then. Ha ha. We were mostly all middle-aged. <laughs> Brad joined the Arts and Aesthetics Committee, and we are now leading the Faith in Action Ministry group which, by the way, we meet after, uh, after this service, dark cream at noon. She concludes, we have found our community of love here and are happy to support it with our time, talent, and treasure. We hope that you will too. Okay. Since joining this fellowship in 2018, I've been amazed and genuinely inspired how its members have stepped up with their time, talent, and treasure. Uh, for example, uh, I was part of the group that decided the theme of New Orleans Mardi Gras, and uh, it was not lost on me that the choir uh, stepped up with their time and, treasure, and time and talent and gave us that wonderful rendition of the Louis Armstrong song, and that festival rendition of When the Saints Go Marching Home. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. I also want to do a shout out to the Junto group, where I can honestly say I lived out that collaborative word, co-create, a word that I had never heard of before, I, before joining this congregation. But this is a pledge drive, and let's be clear, we're asking for financial support. Reflecting on what Reverend Shelley was saying last week about giving what makes you feel good, I think there is a certain sweet spot of contribution. It's about feeling like a contributing force to UUFNN as a positive force in this community. And I genuinely feel it here. Of course, there's other demands on our limited time and our limited treasure. Instead of stepping up, sometimes we have to take a step back and reset our budget, reset our boundaries. Stepping up, stepping back, it reminds me of a dance I recently created that goes two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back, find that sweet spot, keep moving forward. And yes, there's limits to our talent as well. But I'm gonna keep dancing anyway. You can safely look to me to help keep the bar low towards dance participation. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I promise I'll do it in appropriate circumstances. We don't want to scare anyone away. <laughs> Certainly not our youth. 
uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I uh, want to get a final plug in. Uh, Faith in Action Nevada has a listening survey that we're promoting. And uh, no treasure and no talent is required. Just a little bit of time, about five to 10 minutes. Thank you. There used to be a tradition in a lot of our churches with liturgical dance. If you want to start the liturgical dance team. <laughs> Woo. This is a time we take every Sunday to center ourselves in our hearts and think about the joys and sorrows of our lives, all of the ups and downs, the two steps forward, the one step back, the things that make life both rich and beautiful and also challenging and wearying at times. And we light our candles of care and concern for joys, for sorrows, and a global candle to remember that we are a part of the interconnected web. Aspen shared with us that her parents have both recently had birthdays and are now a whopping 50 years old. Woo! Does anyone else feel old? Yeah, yeah. That's good, though. We're, we're sending our birthday congratulations to them. And now we've heard about Patty's illness. We're worried about Patty. Send her our love and support. And our Deborah Graham is not feeling at all well. She's under the weather, so we want to send her some love and care and concern. And um, we are thinking of Pam Gormley and Bill Quillich. They had COVID and are hopefully recovering and getting better. It's still with us. Oh, keeps getting us. Lots of prayers for anyone who's not feeling well. If you have joys and sorrows that you want to share, do let us know. We'd love to be able to give you a call or a card or just let us, let us know so that we can remember you in our prayers and know that you'll know from us that you are loved and cared about here. And with our global candle, we mourn with our Russian siblings the death of dissident Alexei Navalny and send our concern to the hundreds of people who've been rounded up and imprisoned for protesting. And now all those of you who wish to come forward and light your own candles or place stones in the bowl of community Please do so. And while we do that, the rest of you can remain seated, but we're going to join the choir and together we will sing the meditation on breathing.
Today's reading is from 13 Ways of Looking at Community by Parker Palmer. We are embedded in community, whether we think of ourselves as biological creatures or spiritual beings or both. The truth remains, we were created in and for complex ecology of relentlessness and without it, we wither and die. This simple fact has critical implications. Community is not a goal to be achieved, but a gift to be received. When we treat community as a product that must be manufactured instead of a gift we have been given, it will elude us eternally. We need to relax into our creation, created condition and receive the gift we have been giving. Of course, in our culture, a culture premised on the notion that we must manufacture whatever we want or need. Learning to relax and receiving a gift requires hard work, but the work of becoming receptive is quite unlike the external work of building communal structures. Receptivity involves inner work. Community begins not externally, but in the recess of the human heart. Long before community can be manifested in an outward relationship, it must be present in the individuals as a capacity to connectedness, a capacity to resist the forces of disconnection with which our culture and our psychics are riddled. Forces with names like narcissism, egotism, jealousy, competition, empire building, nationalism, and related forms of madness, which psychopathologists and political pathology become powerful and interwoven. We cultivate a capacity for connectedness through contemplation. By contemplation, I mean any way one has of penetrating the illusion of separateness and touching the reality of interdependence. In my life, the deepest form of contemplation has been failure, surfacing sufferings and loss. When I furlish, it is easy to maintain the illusion of separateness, easy to imagine that I alone am responsible for my good fortune. But when I fall, I see a secret hidden in plain sight. I need other people for comfort, encouragement, support, and criticism, challenge, and collaboration. The self-sufficiency I feel in su success is I'm rush. I need community, and if I open my heart, I have it. My concept of community must be captiveness enough to embrace everything from my relationship to strangers I will never meet, the poor around the world, to whom I am accountable, to people with whom I share local resources and must learn to get along, example, immediate neighbors, to people I'm related to for purpose of getting a job done, coworkers, colleagues. A capacity for connectedness is both possible and necessary if we are to inhabit the larger and truer community of our lives. Thank you. The capacity for connectedness that opens us to receive the gifts of community. I think we have that in abundance supply here at UUFNN. And that reading reminded me of a spiritual practice from Brother David Steinelrast, 
called the ABCs of Grateful Living. We talked about it last Thanksgiving, you may remember. And I wanna modify that ABCs practice today to talk about all the things we love about UUFNN. Because when we talk about all the things we love and we are going to go through the whole alphabet, and I guarantee you there are things for every letter of the alphabet that we love about this place, it'll remind us that we have a huge capacity for connectedness, both within ourselves, among us as a community, and beyond us into the wider Reno Sparks, Northern Nevada world, and beyond. It is playful, it is fun, and it's gonna help the transition team make that beautiful profile of all that is wonderful and good and right about UUFNN all of the things at which you are truly amazingly successful in ways that matter most, in ways of the heart, in the ways of love. So we're going to have uh, Nathan as our scribe. We've got a bulletin board here. And Gio is gonna pay attention to our beloveds on Zoom. So folks on Zoom, uh, you can write in the chat. So as we go through the alphabet, add your words to the chat and Gio will let us know and Nathan will write your words too on the board and when we're done we're going to have this fabulous alphabet soup of wonderful things about UUFNN and I'll take that home with me and we'll make a, a beautiful exhibit of that we'll make a poster that'll show all of that and remind us how abundant is our love so we're just gonna do this popcorn, everyone just call out. And if you're a little bit shy, you could always ask your neighbor to call out for you. I say A is for apples from our apple orchard that our beloveds turn into applesauce for Reno Posse. What else does the letter A remind you of around here? Say it harder, say it again. Acceptance, Acceptance. abundance. Altruism. Oh, let's let Nathan catch up. We're doing, we're doing some Abbreviations. Appreciation. Yeah, these are good Scrabble words. All right, you can always come back and add more. There's never, there's never an end to this game. How about the letter B? I think of beloved community, and I think of book club. What else? Building use. Building use. Beloved building, right? We love this place. This is awesome. Any other B words I'm forgetting? Boldly. Brave. brave. We're brave. Rooney. Absolutely. We can just pull out the directory. Your names are all in it. And that's our alphabetical list of our capacity for connectedness. We're blessed, absolutely. Believe, we have beliefs and believe, we believe in one another and community. The letter C, I think of circle suppers and choir and a community garden. There's lots for the letter C, what else? Caring, covenant, my favorite word. Compassion, coffee, woo! and conversation and connection, right? So many good words. The letter D, of course, made me think that dogs are people too. And this is a theology that many of you share. We have some dog people here, but no dogma. What else for the letter D? Dedication, that's a good one. Diversity. Donuts, yeah. Dreams. Discovery. Donations, yeah. All kinds of donations, don't we? That's a good one. E, of course, immediately made me think of excitement. There's a lot of excitement around here, good things going on. What else for E? Say it again. Encouragement. Encouragement. Enlightenment, empathy, earth friendly, right? Energy, 
and joy. Envelopes <laughs> to put your contributions in. <laughs> everyone, E for everyone. We're widening the circles to include everyone. Encouragement, I love that one. F is for forum, right, Kevin? Forum, faith in action. I love our friendship, fun, friends, family, food. All kinds of good things. Forgiveness, oh, that's an important one. Food bank, yes. Food ministry of all kinds, there's a lot of that around here. Forgiveness is a very good one. You can't have that too often. G for growing in love, faith, justice, and joy. Generosity, giving. What was the one over here? Grounds beautification, greener sanctuary, gardening. Greeters. Gathering, so many good words. Gay friendly. Grateful, oh, gratitude, such an important one. H, well, you know H is for HVAC. <laughs> H is for our HVAC is getting fixed. Thanks to all of you being generous and kind. We're gonna have air conditioning this summer. I'm very happy about that. Hospitality, that's the real world word, isn't it? Helping the hungry and unhoused. Hopeful, we're hopeful around here. Help for the homeless. And help for each other, right? I, for immigration and refugee support team. That's an important one. Interesting. Imagination, inspiration, interdependent, I love that word, integrity, what was this one? Inclusive, yes. Ice cream socials, yeah, it's almost getting to that weather. Yeah, yay for Zoom. J for Junto and joining and justice work and joy, jubilation. Lots of good J words. K is for kindness and knowledge and kinship. Kids. L is for love. I love you. And our fabulous library and library. what? Library. The library is fabulous here and it's online. Did you know Sylvia did that? Our library is online. We're so lucky. Woo! Liberty. LGBTQ plus. Friendly. Learning. L is another one of those popular words. It's competing with the letter C. M for ministry and music. <laughs> Membership, very important. Mentorship, meditation, meaning, mission, good stuff. N, N for new beginnings, nursery, Nurturing, nourishing. <laughs> no, yes, yes, that too. What about the letter O? We're open, we have openness. Opportunity, optimism. Outreach, Outreach. good stuff. P for Pride Parade. Y'all have such an important role here in Reno when it comes to these things. Posse, potlucks, progress, possibilities. Pa 
confession, prayer. Q, quality time spent together. Anybody else think of Q word? Quiet, questioning. Queer friendly. R for Reno Posse and religious education and what else for the letter R? Reliance, reflecting, radical change. How about resilience? Resilience, respect, yes. Relationships, resting place. Oh, that's a good one. Renovation. Yep, so many good ones there. S, showing up. Social justice, small group ministry, share the plate. Lots of S words. Solar panels, woo! Special events like our parties. We need more parties around here, don't we? Service, Service. smiles. Social time, safety. Singing, sanctuary. T for transformation. What else? Trans friendly. Together. Talking. Thoughtful. Tech team, woo! Say that one again. Taze. Oh, yeah. We got to bring back Taze. I found Karen's Taze songbook. <laughs> Thankfulness. We all know what the letter U stands for Unitarian Universalism. And you, you the vote, right? Uplifting. United. Understanding. Uplifting some more. It's always a good one. B, volunteering. There's so many ways to volunteer, like at the food bank on Saturday. Voices. Values. Vision. A good one. And voting. Voting. You know, you, you the vote in the last presidential election nationwide. We registered three million people to vote. Woo! We make a difference. And you all helped with that. I know you did. Oh, W is a big one. We're a welcoming congregation. We're widening our circle. We're in solidarity with the water protectors. What else? Wonderful. Winter solstice, worship. Wonder, just wonder, it's a good one. See, they make me rem remember other words when I go back, right? Like, does anybody, did you miss one and you want to go back and tell us what it was? You know what? I found one for the letter X. You are zanacious. Zanacious. It means X E N A C I O U S. Zanacious. You are filled with yearning for change and growth. That's what that means. Xiomara, woo! Oh yeah. That's one of those Ivy League words. My brother told me I went to the Ivy League to learn Scrabble words. X marks the spot, yeah. We're on the map. Y for young adults. A lot of young people in here. Youth. Yearning. Yes, just say yes to life. Good stuff. And Z, zest for living. It's another hard letter. What else for Z? Zoom, 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 zoom. Zealous. 
We're zealous for justice and inclusion. Any other? Okay, so who missed a word? Now you thought of it and you want to tell us. Say it again. Book club. Anti-racism ARC. Anti-racism book club. Yes. M for mystery. W for wonder. Cups. Yay for cups. Does everybody know what cups is? The Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans. It's a pagan group. So it's a, um, a spiritual practice group that helps with worship. What else? Chalice. See for chalice. How could we forget that? Sorry, Alice. That's Alice the chalice. Creative. Creative. Sharing committee. Welcoming committee. Communication. Ooh, rejuvenation. That's a good one. Piano. Ha ha. R for Rosie. Mindfulness, another good one. Well, these are fabulous. And you see our board is full. We've kept Nathan busy. Wow, look at that. So much capacity for connectedness. And you know, I sense in all of you this desire for even more. You want more connection. You want to do more for the community. You want to do more together. And that's what's so exciting and fabulous about UUFNN are the endless possibilities that you create together with your capacity for connectedness. And you share that with the world. You share that with each other and with Reno. And it's such a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, amazing. I'm so lucky and blessed to be here with you. Now, another gift from our beautiful choir, an anthem, the gift of love. Our soloist, Mark, will be joining us today. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>
That was awesome. Thank you. As we approach the time for our offering, give what you will. For the church that has meant so much to you, for the church that meant so much for those that came before you, and for the church that will mean so much to people you will never know. Give what you will, for you are a generous people. For those of us physically here in the sanctuary, we'll be passing the basket. For those of you on Zoom, you can do your offering virtually by texting 73256, putting UUF and N in the message box and hit send. You can also mail a check to the office at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno, Nevada 89511. The best way is to donate to donate is to sign up for automatic giving contact the office carol and she will send you an automatic draft authorization and you could go online and get one very easy yeah uh, here you you fnn each month we also give folks the opportunity to share our generosity by sharing with a designated nonprofit. Share the play for the month of February is the Opportunity Alliance Nevada, a local nonprofit that brings together resources and people for diverse social economic backgrounds to in investigate and understand the various faced by struggling low moderate income Nevadans and provide path to self sufficiency. Now, thank you for your generosity. And now, may the offering begin. Sorry. our offerings to the work of this fellowship which is helping more people grow in love faith justice and joy we dedicate ourselves and these are our offerings <laughs> well I liked our chalice lighting so much I thought we'll hear it again as our chalice extinguishing again we reground ourselves here in our highest values love is the center and the foundation of our faith love is the power that holds us together as a community as we leave this place today let us open our hearts to the healing power of liberating love. Because love is not only something we receive, but something we practice in community. 
let fall away all that might distract us from the wholehearted practice of love. Let us be accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. As we continue to listen and learn, to act and to grow, may each unfold in wholeness, both deeply loving and truly love. My dear ones, go from this place today open to life, expecting to love, and prepared to serve. Please rise and body your spirit and join in singing, answering the call of love. Have a great day, everyone. May your service begin.